Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Amen. So we have this opportunity here on the first Sunday after Christmas to perhaps consider the ways that the couple of stories that have been shared over these Christmas services um, can complement one another, um, shed light on one another. You know, Luke uh, has done such an amazing job of setting out the realities of the world into which Jesus, the Son of God, was born, wanting us to be very sure and aware of the realities of the world that, that we live in, just as Jesus lived in this world. The realities of people vying for power, um, especially power over others, and, uh, and the reality of, of sickness, uh, the reality of so many seemingly um, and absolutely evil things in the world, which Jesus came into this world as the Son of God to bring that light of God, the healing, the mercy, the love, the grace, the justice. And that Luke story focuses on the, the, the birth, the, the very earthly birth of our Lord and Savior in the, so the, those wonderful details of manger, the shepherds, uh, Mary, visiting with Elizabeth. We've heard wonderful, wonderful descriptive stories about Jesus, his mother, her cousin, the shepherds, so, so many others in that, in that scene of the world that Jesus was born into. And then we hear this incredible prologue of John's Gospel, which is anything but earthly, right? I mean, this is a story, it is a picture, it is the Word out there in the cosmos. This is the cosmological Christmas story. And I think one way that it complements the birth narrative of Jesus that we've heard in Luke is that we are understandably focused on this infant born of the Virgin Mary. And John's prologue allows us to appreciate just how much bigger this whole reality is in the sense that it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made Him known. That relationship of Jesus as the Son of God just takes us all out of time, out of this place, and allows us to be exposed to that ever-living, everlasting, ever-loving God Father of Jesus. And in a way that Luke's gospel so explicitly shares the beautiful story of the birth of Jesus, it doesn't offer a glimpse, of, well, it's more than a glimpse. We get a real strong sense of what we will learn through Jesus as the Son of God out of this prologue in John's Gospel. Because to all who received him, who believed in his name, when that word became flesh, and let's think about it, I mean, the word, a word is meant to be uttered. A word is meant to be heard. We are being told right up front in the prologue that this word, as the Son of God, is going to not only be present with us in this world, but also 
continue to build the relationship that we have with God who makes that gift to us and to the world. And so in these complementary ways, we get the birth of Jesus that we can relate to, I think, personally, since we've all known babies and the birthing process in one way or another. And, um, and then we have the explosion of that earthly birth into the just almost incomprehensible meaning of God's creation of this earth, the cosmos of, of, of all that is and all that has been and all that will be. And those are the mysteries that we can look forward to exploring as we continue our faith journeys as followers of Jesus. Now I couldn't help but feel a sudden tremor of expectation or maybe even curiosity with the news of that James Webb Space Telescope that was launched yesterday. My understanding is the mission is to go real deep into space to look for information about the origins of the universe. Well, I suppose my hope and prayer here on the first Sunday after Christmas is that the, uh, the, the, the scientific instruments on that, on that space telescope are tuned in to be looking out for the Word of God that is our cosmos. Amen. Amen.